put it in the context of being a trader. You put your stop losses, right? So you have uh, what I would do if I was the one running uh, a project. I would have stopped it, uh, the operation, and and really halted the, the operation of the blockchain uh, when it reached that certain certain price. So let's say, for example, ninety cents or eighty cents. So by that time, you could actually you know delay uh, and uh, do something, prepare for something, since you already have the assets. So they have their treasury. They have. You, uh, they have Terra, they have everything already uh, at place. And that would have been easier for him when he wanted, if he ever wanted to actually compensate the holders of, of uh, UST. Seeing that this doesn't work with the other applications, like for example, uh, for banks, uh, it doesn't really work uh, well with banks, right? Um, we decided to create a layer wherein they could still participate, having that layer zero. So now what will happen is they could create their own layer one that's specified to their use case and specified to their needs. And they could connect to the layer zero that we have um, created to communicate with the different blockchain networks with ease. You mentioned something interesting that not a lot um, when more people or more larger part of the population get into this space, uh, there's no one chain that could take all of that transactions. Um, do you have a snapshot or an idea of how much does it do we need to be able to take in uh, all of the all of the transactions that are needed? Because the reason why I ask that is when you try to analyze it, uh, Visa and Mas Visa I think has around sixty five thousand transactions per second, and that's. That's, if you try to factor it in, that's already like one out of two of what the biggest uh, the biggest providers already around the world of a lot of the credit card credit card transactions. And if you try to look at it also, Solana, uh, based on what they're disclosing, I, I, I don't know if they could actually have if they've had actual uh, load already to actually hit sixty five thousand transactions per second. As far as I know. Uh, they're still very far from that uh, right now. But how much do they need for that to actually happen? Or won't someone like an, another another project would actually say that, oh, Solana's going to do 65,000, then maybe I'll try to do uh, 300,000 or 200,000 also. Right. So for me, it really depends on the protocol or I would say the framework of, of uh, the project or the architecture, how it's built, the consensus, the mechanisms that happen between the, the transactions. Those are actually the ones limiting you. So as, as you remove that, it's going to be the internet, right? So if you remove those features, it's basically just the internet. So if you add on to those features, the consensus mechanisms, the 0.5 layers, the layer one, the layer two, and so on, it just, you know, clogs uh, uh, the system and delays uh, the transaction throughput. And the reason why we're doing that is to make it more secure. And I wouldn't be surprised if there is someone who could do 3,000, 300,000 to 200,000 transactions per second. But this ranges, it depends, really depends on, on the, the, the data that you're transferring. If it's a very small data, like for example, it's just less than 1 KB, maybe they could do that. But if it's, if it's going to be big data, uh, big transfers of data, and it's not uh, byte size, it's gonna take time so we couldn't really quantify it in terms of transactions per second because all transactions vary because we have to uh, take in mind that this is computing power so this is uh, actually uh, calculated in in terms of uh, bytes so it's 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 basically um when, when they talk about uh, transactions per second or uh, they talk about uh, the throughput uh, it's a close environment wherein they dictate the, the volume of transactions and, of course, the, the size of the transaction. But as of this moment, uh, after reviewing and, and checking on the print statistics, uh, we're just around uh, 15, less than 15% of the total data that's inside blockchain. And it's just part, uh, partly. So I would say 15% is... is uh, basically the population coming in and it's something that we couldn't quantify to transactions as of this moment but uh, as we've seen the, the, the 15% all majority of the blockchain networks are having issues already 
with uh, network congestion. And uh, this is just transferring assets and NFTs. So uh, we haven't seen other use cases as of this moment. Uh, different use cases that you know would require uh, transfer of big data. So what if you know AI uh, and big data machine learning would come in and use the network for security? So we're looking at that as well. Uh, moving forward, and this is something that uh, eventually, if Netflix is able to really deliver, um, and we are very confident about that, we think that we could also bridge that uh, and bring that to to Web3. Mm, got it, got it. And what's very interesting, we're talking about Solana a, a while ago. A lot of people were trying to mint uh, or at least buy some Solana NFTs and uh, just sending it from an exchange to a wallet. It was already congested and it took some time already. Yes. That was not even buying the NFTs. It was just sending your soul to uh, from an exchange to another. And and maybe I'll end this with this. And if you guys are learning uh, from Eman, uh, put some questions below. And maybe in the future we'll do more videos like this also. But Border Yacht Club, other deeds, other side, they had a uh, NFT uh, drop uh, at the start of May, which was one of the biggest NFT drops uh, ever. And but because of that um i think i think at that time it was 55,000 nfts minted at at one go and because there was a lot of attention in it and what's interesting what's interesting about those who were able to had the ability to be able to mint those 55,000 nfts were already whitelisted but in spite of people being whitelisted and in spite of it being relatively limited it was so congested that gas fees were um even so high and and talk, looking at what we were uh, talking about a while ago, this just shows me even more that it, it it won't be really one chain because if one single NFT project uh, could slow down one of the largest networks that we currently have, how much more if there will be more applications that will be built on top of it? Yeah, again, um, the issue there is uh, the infrastructure or the architecture. If uh, you're trying to, you know, uh, you add security uh, layers, it would, uh, it, of course, it has to check uh, the data and uh, for the minting process, it, it has to check all of this uh, information that's being stored into the blockchain. So imagine if uh, you're holding a funnel, for example, and you pour in so much of that data and there's just a small exit, right? So that, that's how uh, consensus works. It's going to funnel everything, and um, when it's fu funneling so much information and it, and it piles up on top, uh, what it needs to do is it, it has to, of course, the exit is just the same. It, it has to add another layer of funnel, mm -hmm. and uh, for it to be decongested. So that being said, the way it works is they have to add the number of nodes, they have to add the computing power, they have to add to the number of miners, I would say, or node operators to to speed up the process of uh, uh, just checking and securing uh, the data and encrypting the data also. It's just a matter of time. For now, uh, these are really, uh, really uh, easily seen uh, because, you know, blockchain projects cater to kilobytes of data, just small data. And as you can see, Bitcoin, for example, they're just around 300 to 400 uh, gigs of data. That's the whole uh, transactions uh, since the start until now. So imagine that uh, twice of that uh, being held by new projects. So that that's the magnitude of data that, that they're trying to basically compute and uh, encrypt and at the same time validate transact and so on and so forth. So it's going to really delay the project, uh, rather the the transaction. Got this. I, I said last question, but I want to make this more exciting. We'll end this with something more exciting and maybe uh, more controversial also. Uh, two questions that are hand in hand. I'm sure everyone knows about the what happened to Terra Luna, but my question is this. If you were Doc, if you were Doc Won, at the moment where you already saw uh, the depegging, first question, uh, what would you do at that very moment? to address Terra and the US dollar not being one is to one anymore. Then second, um, given that everything Luna dropped to 0.000 something already, 
uh, what would you do to revive it? This is because I was able to analyze it already. Uh, and uh, if ever that happened to, to me, uh, it wouldn't be my immediate action because I would need time to analyze the situation. But analyzing the situation is, um, if you're a trader, let's put it in the context of being a trader. You put your stop losses, right? So you ha- uh, what I would do if I was the one running a uh, project, I would have stopped it. Uh, the operation and and really halted the, the operation of the blockchain uh, when it reached that certain certain price. So let's say for example 90 cents or 80 cents. So by that time you could actually you know delay uh, and uh, do something, prepare for something. Since you already have the assets, so they have their treasury, they have you uh, they have Terra, they have everything already uh, at place, and that would have been easier for him when he wanted if he ever wanted to actually compensate the holders of of uh usd and uh, of course of luna uh for me that would have been one of the better options uh and the things that you know uh that that's uh something that i would do rather uh if it was uh, happening in my case uh that way you could explain it better right if you have the ch- you still have the chance you, you're not just you know um trying to uh, of course this web3 is basically uh, community based so if the community turns your, their back on you you'd really fall uh, it's not going to be uh, something that you could always be prepared about so uh, you have to take in mind uh, in, in, into consideration that sometimes uh, you have to put your stop losses somewhere so in my case in my in my in my opinion uh, i would have done that But it's again, as I've said, I was able to think about this because I was I, I already analyzed the situation, and it's something that maybe Duquan uh, have thought about also. But it's something that I would do, if, especially if it was a stable coin and it's something of uh, uh, that should be pegged into a dollar uh, to a dollar. Given its current um, setup right now, um, that it has 0.1 to a dollar and Luna 0.001 because of the number of Luna that they minted. Uh, how would you recover? What would you do to recover it? What 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 would be your plan? Would you fork it? Would you not fork? <laughs> I know the questions are hard, but what what would you, what would you do? <laughs> Honestly, it's hard because it's it's like you know creating a duplicate of something that that didn't work. So if you're going to fork it, you would have the same problems, same issues, and of course you would have to have. Uh, you would have to get backing and funding again uh, to bring that up. So uh, one of the things that they they did was actually to to buy back and burn. But the problem is everybody wanted out. So and 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 it doesn't equate to the treasury. They're holding so little, but there are a lot of people who wanted to exit. So again, if it's uh, something that you know it's not backed really backed by asset and of course the reason why is bitcoin also fell right so uh there is uh, already that much uh issue uh going on prior to to uh what happened and and it's something that also affected the situation and uh, for me what i would do moving forward is to first before forking it look into the architecture If it's really gonna work or not, or if it's something that you know you would use just to delay the, the fact that you know everybody is watching you and uh, you just wanted to give an immediate response for the pegging of uh, back to the dollar. Of course, all you need to do is just burn the excess. Uh, the question now is, where is the excess? Is it uh, is it is it held by Luna or is it still held by the people? Uh, and and of course, uh, they may may have used uh, some of the resources in other areas. So I wouldn't know. Uh, those are merely speculation. Uh, I've read most about it in Twitter. So there may be other things, but for me, forking it wouldn't solve uh, the, the the issue. It's just you know going to delay what's going to happen or bound to happen because it failed. Uh, you weren't really able to back it up uh, with Luna or or with the the treasury, the the amount of BTC that they, they held. And uh, I do hope that people still uh, 
you know recover from from those losses and at the same time maybe uh, hope for the best for Duquan maybe he could think about other things that would really give a the right solution to to all these holders and all the people who believed in in UST and in Luna it wasn't a very very uh, um, inspiring question to end everything but it was something that I think is very relevant to everyone watching this so uh, what I'll do maybe in the next uh, in the latter future we'll talk more about this with what you guys are doing uh, with Tetrix as well but for those who want to know more about Tetrix I'll put the link in the description below uh, for those who want to know more about it they have uh, two dApps already they have a wallet it's called Pitaka you can check you can check it out and then they have also a I guess the easiest way to explain it is like a decentralized messenger function also for uh, people who want to communicate there so uh, a lot of exciting things are are, are going on uh, check them out and then uh, if you guys have questions just feel free to put it in the comment section down below so I guess that's it for now um, thank you so much Emma Naval and CEO Tetrix for joining us uh, Marvin Germo I hope this video helps you trade well trade strong trade smart see you all again soon and God bless you all Thank you.